What's going on guys and girls and welcome back to the bench. This might be long, it might be short, we'll see. It's about different coax and it's only going to be about the name brand Times Microwave. Do not, do not get a generic brand. Do not. Got that part? You're speaking with someone. I don't know if to date there might be somebody that has caught up, but I doubt it. I'm responsible myself and my ex-employees from the past. And yes, I got my calculator out to make sure that it was accurate. And I'm just gonna be modest when I say this. Over 100 miles of coax. It's a lot. A lot of ends, a lot of practice. That's just under the name fine tune. That doesn't include me working for other shops in Texas. Okay, there's a lot of misinformation out there, just so much. I'm gonna try to, I'm not gonna get extremely technical, just guide you to where you can look things up yourself. And I suggest that you listen closely and don't try to mix up what I say, all right? Or it can cost you. My Jeep, it's literally set the standards for barefoot radio. I think that's pretty obvious and everyone can agree. There's plenty of pictures on how to do it and what to do. The only thing you might have problems with is soldering the ends on the coax. The length is also critical, and I'm gonna get into length a little bit, and also why name brand is critical. The longer you go, it's not, but still times microwave. All right, I've been talking about a point 2 dB loss or better, lower is better. Actually, if you do the math, it's like 0.12, but I'm gonna have connectors, etc. This is Times Microwave LMR 600. Right. I'm gonna be using exactly one wavelength. I might alter it slightly from 27.2. I gotta do some calculating and some figuring and some thinking from 27.555 to 27. 915. So for the sake of this, let's just say 27.2. Andrews and Heliax Hardline. That's just, I can't, I'd have to buy pipe benders or a muffler shop to get it wound into my shop here. It's just, it would be too much. And there's other coax out there too, other brands. But I needed the extra couple of feet, which gives me a velocity factor of 87 with this. So feet, where I'm located, how I'm, I got my antenna positioned, what I'm going to do in the future with a beam, many steps are taken into consideration. Pretty much in stone, okay? but it's one step at a time. There are PL259s available for this. The pin is solderable, it's soldered, Teflon, and like a compression fitting, like this, right there. No, these ain't cheap either, it's an LC. So again, I needed the length, and like I, you hear me on the radio from time to time, I want to be able to hear my radios and your radio too if it's a fine-tuned radio. No other ones because without a Faraday cage and the right equipment that's calibrated, there's no way I would ever say that or could say that. If you've watched some of the gates in my Jeep from the past, 
and nothing's changed, I could talk to my barefoot radios across this country in mobiles where you never seen anything move on the meter. I can't do that here in the shop. Right now, I'm using, and it's about eight or nine years old, Times Microwave LMR 400. We're gonna talk about that there too in a second. And the spool, a couple spools of Times Microwave LMR 240 UF. And that's the shiznets for what we use or what you guys mostly use. Remember, I normally use what I promote. I will not change. I will not play the games that others do. I always use what I promote. Now, this time, this is going to be equivalent to like the 240 and lost by my length. This is going to be better, okay? This is going to be better. But considering my radios on AM and sideband, I could hear a tone. My radios are modified in such a fashion. It's not just the signal, it's volume leveling, it's the tone. So here in my shop with 400, where I could take, and I have multiple phones by the way. This is my normal phone. I have a lot of different phones that I went through throughout the years that uh, I have multiple Wi-Fi and hotspots. So I can monitor what's going on through my laptop right here. Like put one in my Jeep, one in the shop, move my Jeep around. I don't have to move very far. I'm in a really cool spot. It's not by coincidence. And I can just listen to both. Watch the meter, everything is calibrated here on this bench. Yes, I can make two radios very, very extremely close to each other, like a fingerprint, right? And I have loss here in the shop. I'm in direct connect right now, the way I'm sitting, and the radio is up there. with the 400 wavelength and a half. It comes down my, the bottom of my ground plane, comes down, it used to come down like, uh, well it was total 36 foot up. So it come down and wrap around like this and then come into my shop with extra. Now I've dropped it to a specific height after doing some measuring, theoretically. Uh, this should fit. If it don't, I'm going to make it. If I have to move my antenna a foot, I'm going to. I, mean, I try to tell people, same thing. Put your radio near your antenna. Put your antenna near your radio for your base. Don't be putting it way out in the middle of the yard unless you have to for some reason because the loss in this stuff is crazy. Unless you spend a lot of money on hardline, you don't want that antenna away from your radio if you like to hear. So considering that I want to be able to hear down below negative 137 dBm, some might say at those lengths or wavelengths and at frequency it won't matter. Well, you know, at S9 it ain't going to matter. But when you start going down below negative 120, those decimals start to add up quickly. And I can really see it here in the shop. And I'm elevated, I'm higher than my Jeep. It doesn't take brain surgery. The only other variable is a 5 eighths wave versus a quarter. There is a difference. So there, there's a difference. I don't want to go in depth on that. I'll get into that later. I want to have more data. See, that's also a tracking generator. Right. Not just some little Chinese piece of plastic. That's a bad boy sitting up there. So I'm going to be using this in the future, like I said. And I want to show you guys, too, that are putting their system together what that is. See that wire? Now, never mind the fogginess or discoloration of the foam. It's because I cut with a drum because they cut it with a damn wire cutter and smashed it. But none of that will be there when I go to assemble it. PL259s are available. LCs, I'm sure 716 DIN. Just go to Times Microwave site. 
get the, I wouldn't go nowhere else, just times, type in the right number of coax, model number, UF versus sow. And one of the reasons I don't like the sow, and I don't remember if, you know, I made a mistake and forgot to get the UF, or I bought the copper drawn over aluminum clad. I know and I'll never do it again. See, 240 is solid copper wire, the conductor. And I did another test on that. I might remember to talk about that here in a minute. This will handle 4.5 at 30 megahertz uh, RMS kilowatt. So you can multiply that times three and have plenty extra, extra room. Providing you're not using a Jackmobile POS splatter box harmonics radio and amplifier. That changes all the equation, every bit of it, when you start getting up into power. Every, you can't even imagine. You gotta keep them clean, all right? I'm never gonna utilize this coax for power I want to be able to hear. So at the end of my, my antenna, I'll be making copper eyelets. I'll strip this back and I'll make it all quite unique. I'll split the two grounds so the grounds are spread out in two different places instead of one on the antenna side. And uh, it'll be directly connected to my antenna and shielded from weather. And this is here. Let me see if I can show you. I don't keep, I have extra, I don't want to waste it, but it's flexible. It's actually flexible. It's not like the 240, but it is flexible. If I wanted to bend this, like to where my radio was behind me, I could bend it and mold it and, and just keep it right there, you know? I don't want to bend it and waste it. I don't like bending wire a lot. It's not a good thing to do. That brings me back to the 400 or the solid over, you know, drawn over aluminum. What happens with that is, it's only so many mils thick, so when you bend it, when you bend it, okay, the outside, and I've, I've experimented with some other 400 that's here. I've been dealing with copper a, a pretty long time, okay? Long time. And I get into weights, like at the periodic table, and the resistance, deeper than probably most know. Anyways, so now when you bend the wire, say that's the conductor, now you're stretching this, you're pushing this in, not as much problem as this. You're making that thinner and changing the molecular makeup of the copper as the RF is going across it. You with me? You don't want to do that. It's like having a bunch of impedance bumps down your wire, which that will also change with power. Had to give you all kinds of issues. My antenna's been up and down a bunch of times. Every I've already shown a video with my uh, analyzer, both analyzers. It's looking good, but that's with just an analyzer. And I just can't hear like my Jeep. Some people are probably thinking, your Jeep, your base station versus your Jeep. Yeah, I'm not mobile. I've been doing mobiles a lot. <laughs> okay, a lot. And uh, would I go to this stuff? You know, I, I could, but I would not go to this in my Jeep. This is what's in my Jeep. Here's the 400 UF. You can see it also. It's not solid. Well, it's multi-strand. I forget how many strands of what the gauges are. Quite a few strands. The one, the strands in here aren't many, but they're humongous. This stuff is awesome. So if you guys are going to put up a base station, now you know that available are PL259s that will Go into the back of your box, be careful with the power and or your radio. Providing you mold and shape everything. Or you go into a switch 
you know, which I don't like to use switches. This radio, when I'm done, will not be on any switch at all. It's going to go straight to the antenna. So the loss on this is going to be extremely minimal. It's got, a, I forget, 10-year MBTF or whatever you want to call it, be, you know, be, be, before failure, meantime, which is plenty. So it's like the coax I got outside right now, it's, it's, it's almost there. It's been in snow and mostly sun. This, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Okay, got it. I was going to use this stuff. But then, after doing a little bit more math, and it's velocity factor, electrical and physical length, I say, wait a minute, this stuff will fit, but it's so close, it's too close. So I needed the extra length. I gotta go get something else, and I'll be right back. All right, getting hungry, so I might babble a little bit. And here's the stuff, again. It's like radios. If you don't see it come out of a case, you don't want it. We've seen, you know, the 600 and the 400. It's all my stuff, but that's not for sale. And buying 500 and 1,000 foot at a time of that stuff is crazy. I don't sell much 400. I stopped doing all that. This is the key right here. The stuff. We got another spool. Partial, or it's those have already been cut for tuning, and this, which for the next two, three days, this is all I'm going to be doing. Be patient, 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 patient. How much longer? I know. All this stuff takes time, so instead of doing one, two, three, four, five at a time, I got to get a bunch of them done. And uh, yeah, this is the stuff. Now, this is where. The online calculators are pretty much useless when it comes to making tuned half wavelengths. Mm, it'll be upside down, but oh well. There are many other variables involved in just trying to use a calculator, and by some miracle, it's going to be right. It'll be right at some frequency, but you, you won't have any idea which one. You could be way off, real quick and easy. The soldering abilities are probably the number one key with this. And uh, you only get one chance to put the last end on. I can't get this coming through here. So it's just a smidgen short. If I raise it up like this. Ooh, so close. What I'm going to do for now with this video, and then I'll waste the zip tie. I don't want the stuff all over the place. When it comes to mobiles and jumpers, this is the stuff. I know, so I'm not, I'm, I don't know who brought up this RG400. More than likely, someone that doesn't know how to solder, or poor soldering skills. That RG400 is like the properties of RG58. Yes, it'll handle more heat, but what we are doing with very clean equipment, we don't have to worry about it catching on fire with all those harmonics and gazillions of watts. I did a test with the solid of this coax in the Amarillo at, what was it, like one and a quarter continuous? For a number of years, and then I think I already did a video covering this. I'm pretty good with these. This is before they sold the property, you know, in Amarillo where I was. Another inconvenience. Turn this down. What I did is I sliced it all open. Like I said, I'm good with these. I, I, I still use these to make this. 
sliced it open and inspected every single inch of the foil, the ground shield, and the conductor, 360 degrees. And it was flawless, literally flawless. Now I don't anticipate you guys trying to get up around 5K, no. And that was with a Class C, but it was clean. One of my radios, nothing like what, what, what I'm doing now though. The strikers. So, now, the half wavelength tuned coaxes, they have a lot of advantages. There's really no disadvantage. <clears throat> if you want to see how I do it, there's plenty of other videos that I got in pictures. Is, for instance, if, you're, if you have a, a ground plane base station and you want to tune it, whether you have to go drive 100 miles, I don't care, it's, you, it's all up to you. Or you could do it in your backyard, there's no trees, it's flat, everything around you is above, above the radials. All you need is a 10 foot pole, a ladder. I do it all myself, I don't need help, and a rope to hold it on the back side of the ladder. And then use my analyzer to tune it. You don't want no metal or anything reflecting on your antenna. Like most do on vehicles, they detune their antenna because of that. So when you have an impedance repeater, it's just as good or better than connecting the analyzer directly to your antenna. Because you're gonna be your body's gonna be right up underneath it, your hands and metal versus the coax dropping down to the ground, or you can go up and down the ladder, you have to actually stand on the ladder so enough that it falls over. You could use like a piece of top rail, inch and five eighths or inch and seven eighths, whatever it is, for quite a few different ground planes and tune it. That's where, right in the middle of the band, the tuned half wavelength coax is really cool. That way, when you do that, you take your antenna up. And if you're using, you know, tuned wire, you could probably use any length, but if you want to act your reading, then you still want to use a tune multiples of a wavelength odd in other words to your antenna the longer it is the better your SWRs are going to look <laughs> so when you use a tuned half wavelength above ground with a ground plane you could actually tune that puppy in extremely accurate as long as it's not raining you're not doing it next to a metal barn you gotta use a little bit of common sense you know so when you put that antenna up in the air it's tuned you can use that coax on a mobile. People buy a lot of these coaxes from me. By the way, I don't sell coax. They're only available for sale with a brand new radio and or to my existing customers, minimum four. Bare minimum, a lot of people already know this. So do not ask me, hey, can I have, I'm gonna buy jumpers. No, you're not a customer. It's a pain in the butt to make this stuff but yet I know how critical it is. That's why I do it. I don't want to, I hate doing it now. It's very time consuming. And I got a lot of other things to do. But for the mobile, I know, like I said, I know how critical this is. This is part of that tuned circuit. Same thing when you go to use a mobile antenna. Well, there's gonna be a lot of other things involved when you go to tune one, even with a tuned half wavelength, but you're gonna be seeing what the antenna sees when you have it connected right at the feed point and everything's grounded accordingly. Mostly what you're gonna see is reflection. Usually a bad ground, usually it's gonna be too long if you have metal objects. It's gonna be too long, that's what metal does. Whether it's, especially if it's on the same ground, it's gonna make it read long. Usually shorts of a bad ground. All right, so the tuned halves are like really critical and also really good to have. I have a couple laying around here that I, I just use. They're coiled up with zip ties on them. So base stations, I don't know. You could probably use, you know, a wavelength or two wavelengths if you had to, like on the ground. And again, like I said, you get up to a wavelength or two the internet calculators are going to be, when you cut it and start experimenting how to solder the ends on, 
it's going to be much more forgiving. But when you get down to a half, it's really critical. There's like so much per channel, just like your antenna. Copy? All right. I hope you got something out of this. I'm going to stop this for a second and think. Oh, yeah. I show my soldering abilities also, you know, other things. But mobile, under a K, this is what you want. That's all the good stuff. It's not that other crap. The only reason they, they don't use this is because they don't know how to solder. It takes, it's tricky. These ain't on, they're gonna look dirty, but yeah, I use these like chopsticks. A tip, I gotta replace it. Probably bow tips as I sit down, try to get a bunch of these done. I was hoping there'd be a lot of skip the next couple days. So I just sit here and do, just do this. But can't key the mic, not making coax, can't do nothing really. All you could do is just sit here with sponges, coax, PL259 street tube, and soldering iron. You gotta stare at it nonstop. But I will keep making it because it is a crucial part of a mobile radio. The good stuff. That stuff. Can you use it? You know, I, I used I used the, the 400. It's got a higher velocity factor, but it's different than 400. They're both different. The 240 stands for the like quarter of an inch, 0.24 of an inch. 400 is 0.4 of an inch. The 600 is 0.6. The difference between, there's a major difference between 400, 240 and 400 besides its size is the 240 solid is solid copper versus the 400 is copper drawn over aluminum. I'll never use it again, okay? I'll never use it again. Stay tuned in, I hope you got something out of this. Be patient. These are just some of the things that I have to do. And it's time consuming. Like all get out. Awesome. Are we having fun yet? Ah, I guess they're not having no fun. On Sesame Street. All right, enjoy the weekend. 163. Mud Duck Station in the desert. Clear and gone. Back again. I don't know how nice how to say this nicely, but just to inform you, there's a lot of things that I do. And one of them is, you know, because I wish I could find somebody that did this commercially. So when I see somebody advertising or I've seen other people say, and as long as it's a business, you know that this person or this business, they've been doing it for 50 years, does it, and they purchase them, and everything looks okay with some of them, and I'm not gonna give you any names, is good until you look at the ground shield and it's not soldered. Bad news, you can't have that on a vehicle outside. Can't do it. Stay tuned in. I'm out of here. Click, click.